In this video, I'd like to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. And in this example problem, we need to subtract these two different rational expressions. Remember, a rational expression is essentially a ratio of two polynomials, or you can think of these as fractional expressions. And since we're subtracting these two different fractions, it might be helpful to remember how to subtract fractions when they're just numerical, when it's just numbers. So let's consider that before we actually look at solving this specific problem. So let's say we have 3 over 4, and we're going to subtract 1 fifth. So when subtracting fractions or adding, remember that the first step is to find a common denominator. And there are two ways to look at it, or two ways to approach this. The simple way to find this common denominator is to just take your two denominators and multiply them together. And so you get 20. Or you could try and find the least common multiple of the two denominators. So for that, and in this case, they're actually going to be the same. But for that one, we take 4 and 5 and just look at their multiples. So 4, 8, excuse me, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. And for 5, we look at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. And we want their least common multiple between the two. So in this case, 20, since it is the least that are common between these. But like I said, in both cases, they're the same here. But in many other cases, they're different. Like if we had 1 half plus 1 fourth, in that case, you could multiply them together and get a denominator of 8. And that would certainly work. But if you want to use the least common multiple, you can list out their multiples. And notice that 4 would be the least common. So 8 is a common multiple, but it's not the smallest one. And so 4 is actually a simpler denominator to use here and would save you work in the long run if you can recognize that 4 works as a denominator. But either way it works here. They will both give you the correct answer as long as you're careful with your work. So going back to this question so that we can actually subtract these, we want to give each of these a denominator of 20. And so for this first fraction, you want to multiply the top and the bottom by 5 so that you can turn the denominator to 20. And for the second one, you're going to want to multiply the top and the bottom by 4 to get that denominator of 20. And so for this first fraction, the numerator is now 15 and the denom denominator is 20. And for this second fraction, we have minus 4 for the numerator over 20 for the denominator. And once these denominators are equal, then you can carry out the subtraction across the top. So 15 minus 4 is just 11. Or in other words, you have 15 of these 20ths, and you're taking away 4 of these 20ths. And so in total, you would have 11 of those 20ths left. And so that would be your final answer, and it would be fully simplified since we use the least common multiple as our denominator. So the strategy is the same when you have variable expressions. It's just a little bit more complicated. And for most of these, you're just going to use the fact that if you take one denominator and multiply it by the other, that will give you a common denominator. So let's make some room, and then we can approach this problem. So I've rewritten our problem here, these two rational expressions that we're subtracting. And the first step, since we're subtracting fractions, is to find that common denominator. And so we're just going to take the two denominators and multiply them together. So x plus 3 times by x plus 8, and that will be a common denominator. And for these problems, you can either expand or leave it factored, this denominator. So I'm just going to leave it factored for now. And so we're going to take our first expression, this 8 over x plus 3. And to get that common denominator, we're going to need to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 8. 
And that way we will get our desired common denominator. And likewise, we'll take our second expression. And since this denominator already has x plus 8, we're going to need to multiply the top and the bottom by the other factor here in our denominator, this x plus 3. And by doing this, we'll end up with our desired common denominator. So both of these will have x plus 3 times x plus 8 as the denominator of their expressions. And from here, their numerators will be different, but we can simplify them and then in the end, combine them together. So we have 8 times x plus 8 here minus 2 times x plus 3. And let's just write all of this as one fraction. And really, you can skip this middle step here once you get good at these and just rewrite it with one denominator. So x plus 3 times x plus 8. And over here, let's distribute. You get 8x eight, eight plus 64. And over here, you get minus 2x minus 6. Because remember, we're essentially distributing this negative to each of these. So it's really like minus 2 times x and minus 2 times 3. So you get minus 2x and minus 6. Another way to think about it is that you're subtracting this entire thing here. So again, that negative will distribute to both. And you need to be careful about that since that's often where students will make a mistake. So now simplifying our numerator, we would have that 8x minus 2x is 6x, and 64 minus 6 would be plus 58. And our denominator, we can just leave the same, or if you want, you can expand it. So multiplying it out, you'd get x squared plus 3x plus 8x, which is 11x, and 3 times 8 is 24. So you have the choice. You can either expand like we did here, or you can leave your denominator factored. But this would be the final answer that you would put into your box here.